Pleural effusions are caused by an abnormal accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity. Normally there is approximately 15 mL of fluid to lubricate the pleural surfaces. Several different types of fluid can occur in a pleural effusion. The usual type is serous fluid producing a hydrothorax, blood produces a hemothorax, chyle produces a chylothorax, pus produces a pyothorax and very occasionally an iatrogenic pleural effusion can be caused by a misplaced central venous infusion line where for example fluid from total parenteral nutrition might accumulate in a pleural cavity. A transudate is excessive movement of fluid through normal vessel walls. An exudate is excessive movement of fluid through damaged vessel walls. Transudates are characterised by fluids containing less than 30 grams of protein per litre. This may be caused by increased hydrostatic pressure, for example with heart failure, or decreased osmotic pressure, for example where there is hypoalbuminemia due to nephrotic syndrome. This section of kidney is stained with Congo red, demonstrating amyloid in the glomeruli. Exudates contain more than 30 grams of protein per litre. Causes include infections such as pneumonia, tumours, for example carcinoma of the lung, mesothelioma and metastases, pulmonary infarcts, inflammation and abdominal diseases such as acute pancreatitis. This is a photograph of carcinoma of the lung which is a common cause of pleural effusion. Chylothorax is caused by obstruction of the thoracic lymphatics or by damage to the thoracic duct. The milky white fluid filling the pleural cavity in this case is a chylous pleural effusion. Pyothorax or empyema is caused by infections such as pneumonia, lung abscesses and liver abscesses. Coming into view here is a lung abscess. Ruptured aortic aneurysms and trauma are the usual causes of hemothorax. This is an example of a ruptured dissecting aneurysm of the ascending aorta. Pleural effusions can be investigated in the laboratory in a number of ways. For example, biochemistry can look for the protein content, cytology and pleural biopsy for atypical cells, and microbiology for infection. This is a malignant pleural effusion caused by adenocarcinoma. The tumour cells can be seen in the centre of the field. So, what is it actually like to have a pleural effusion and how do they present? I was diagnosed with late onset asthma about four years ago. And being a good patient, I used my Beclazone inhaler twice daily and Ventolin as required. But my asthma deteriorated during the autumn winter of 06 07. I went to see a GP prior to a trip to Australia in January because uh, I had a serious cough what I characterise as a 60 a day cough, though I, I'd never smoked in my life. He assumed that my asthma was becoming more acute and prescribed prednilisone and another puffer, I've forgotten the name, in addition to the Beclazone. You know, with the benefit of hindsight, I, I wished he'd listened to my chest because I guess there was more going off than uh, he thought at the time. Anyway, during the spring and summer of 07, my symptoms became much, much more problematical. My 60 at a cough was even worse, particularly in the first half hour after waking. I experienced great difficulties with my breathing, especially if I exerted myself, and I began to feel old and just generally debilitated. I saw the asthma nurse at the GPs for my annual checkup, my annual asthma checkup, and told her that I was struggling, struggling for breath and feeling very weak indeed. Now, since she was seeing me in the context of an asthma clinic, she treated me for my asthma. She re-prescribed the additional puffer that I'd been on during my Australia trip. What she didn't do, of course, was listen to my chest because, of course, she hadn't been trained to do so. 
During August and early September, what I thought of still as my asthma became increasingly incapacitating. And in the second week of September, I saw my regular GP, who did listen to my chest, thank goodness, realised there was nothing happening on the right-hand side and sent me for the CT scan. During the month between seeing that GP and having the pleural effusion drained, my general condition deteriorated markedly. I found it increasingly difficult to talk. I really couldn't talk in, in complete sentences. Couldn't move about very well. I could barely eat. My appetite was very poor. Couldn't climb stairs or sleep. I was losing weight rapidly, but developing an embarrassing pot belly. This made it very difficult for me, for example, to bend over and do my shoelaces up. I could only sleep sitting up and was distressingly conscious of the fluid moving about inside my chest. The relief when the first litre of fluid was drained was uh, dramatic. Four days and seven litres later, I began the first of six cycles of chemotherapy to treat what turned out to be non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And here is the follicular non-Hodgkin's B-cell lymphoma that caused that pleural effusion. 